Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode four of Leadership Link. It's a live stream video interview podcast where we talk about leadership and how to reconceptualize it through the words and eyes of different practitioners, coaches, experts, leaders, and people who develop leaders. Today, we have one of those people. Now, and another important note, uh, number one, the person we're speaking with is on the other side of the world, Singapore. So shout out to Singapore. Number two, this is the first show in English. We've done four previous episodes in Espanol. So I'm really proud because I prefer English. <laughs> That's basically why. Now, um, so I'm really happy about that. So who's with us today? Today, we have Dr. John Kenworthy, creator of Leadership Advent Edge. Neuros neuroscience-based leadership coaching and training in effective tech-enabled learning environments. That's a hand. That's a mouthful, but he's going to explain what that means specifically right now. And aside from having him from all the way on the other side of the world, very happy about that. Uh, uh, he's a, a great person, and he'll tell us a little bit about his background. Uh, a lot of energy. Uh, uh, seems to be a very positive and happy person. So it's, I'm glad to have him on today. Now, what are we going to be talking about? What's the topic? Well, the topic for today is neuroscience hacks to help you raise your virtual leadership game, right? We're going to be talking about that. He's going to explain a little bit about those hacks, those brain hacks and how they can raise your game in the virtual leadership world right now. Uh, so without further ado, let me do some stuff here. There we go. Here we go. Hello, Dr. John Kenworthy. Hi, Roberto. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. perfect. Greetings from Singapore. We are on the other, as you mentioned, on the other side of the world. So we can uh, meet virtually and all around the world simultaneously at the same time. Completely marvelous. We love it. We love it. Exactly. Completely marvelous. Yeah, I love this. And, uh, you know, right now it's 10 p.m. Central Daylight take Savings Time, and over there it's a.m., right? You're in the morning. That's right. It's 11 o'clock in the morning for us. So, All right. Thank so you, you for staying your... up so late. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm delighted. And you've got your coffee, and I've got my sleeping pills. So, yeah, we're ready. Yep, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, so today we have this topic, right? When I asked you what would be the best thing about leadership you could talk about, you focused mm -hmm. on this. Now, of course – this must be relevant with the introduction I made about you. Tell us about Leadership Advantage and the play on uh, leadership, um, leadership Advantage, uh, the E-D-G-E -E -D -G -E at the end, as opposed to A-G-E as normal, is, is our learning and development process, which is to encourage people to get outside their comfort zone. We develop them, we guide them through coaching, and we empower them with the templates, with the hacks, with the ways of being able to do this in the real world. So the advantage is, is being able to take something that you are learning about leadership, not just learning how to be a leader, but very much how can you do leadership and what are the things that you can do to lift your leadership game very easily, very quickly uh, tomorrow, as soon as, as soon as you put this into practice. It's all about putting it into practice, of course. And uh, and tell us a little bit about effective tech-enabled learning environments. I'm curious about that part. Um, I've been using technology to help learning for very many years. I go back to bulletin board systems, uh, using those in order to teach. At the time, it was prisoners and um, being able to run teaching events as they were in those days but asynchronously with with bulletin boards very much like a chat system is now it's, it hasn't, right. hasn't developed that much but what i okay. did find was that uh, and and particularly more recently as as everybody has gone online all the teachers trainers schools have gone online when they've resisted for so very many years in spite of having the technology to be able to do it the tech-enabled environment can be misused very easily. Uh, there's far too much talking head going on, which is boring. And when right. you see a lot of the 
teaching and training that is going on, it tends to be that very talking head lecture style. Yeah, it happens. But what we cannot really do is take what we were doing in the real world, in the live world, per, in person, and just transplant it by sticking a video camera in front of ourselves. That's not using the technology as well. This is uh, technology that appears to do the same thing as we can do in person. We can right. actually make it better, but okay. most people unfortunately make it worse. Uh, okay, so it's not just about throwing a camera on there and be like, nope, we're doing you know, video distance learning just because there's a camera on, right? There's a lot more other uh, things. Yeah, yes, now now that we can have cameras, people are putting cameras on and, and only two or three years ago, very few people were using the camera. Uh, everyone was doing audio or simply asynchronous chat, email type of things. We can actually do a lot more, but just because the tech is there and it's available does not mean to say it's a good way of, of learning and developing. Of course. Now, that, that's based on, on what you're doing at uh, Leadership Advant Edge, right? Advant yes. Edge as like the edge. So getting that that's advantage right. and the edge. So um, I understand that. Now, going back, you know, that in reference to what we're going to talk about, moving to today's topic, neuroscience mm -hmm. hacks to help you raise your virtual leadership game. So what we're going to do yep. is uh, it's very straightforward. I'm going to start asking you a couple questions about this, and I'm curious okay. to know. Um, and again, so basically very, very logical because that's my brain, very <laughs> logical. How can we use neuroscience to become better leaders? Very broad. You can go ahead and, and uh, start so, there. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly huge, huge area. But, uh, you know, when I, when I think about that, it's let's start with a couple of basics about neuroscience that we now understand or we understand better about the way our brain works. And if we imagine that our brain is really in two parts, two key parts, the, the basic survival mechanism, which is in the brain stem, and what is called the limbic brain or the middle brain, mm -hmm. where your emotions happen and, and things like, you know, you, you breathe. You're breathing from the day you are born. Nobody has to think about their breathing because it's all controlled by the brain, but it's what what uh, Christine Comerford called the critter brain. I love using this as the critter brain. Some people call it the lizard brain, but it's it's the older part of our brains in terms of evolution, if you're into evolution. But looking at the basic functionality of life, but it's incredibly important. And on top of that, we're, we've got layered the neuro, neocortex, or again, what Christine Comerford calls the smart brain. So right. if we think of it as being two parts, we've got our critter brain and we've got our smart brain. And one of the big problems about leadership, for example, a couple of big problems in developing leadership, change is difficult. Now, if we take the very simple thing, if you just cross your arms the way you normally cross your arms and you sit there, you're very comfortable there. Right. And but actually, I'm are, doing it the other way around and it's very uncomfortable. Uh, if you do it the other way around, you change and it becomes it's, then you sit there for a little while, it becomes very strange. And before long, you mm -hmm. will revert to the way that yes, it's comfortable. Yes, to do. Of course. So yes. any even something as simple as that, because you can feel it. Now, that's information coming from your critter brain. So that's all your nerve endings telling you there is something just not comfortable. But any change is uncomfortable. So teachers trainers coaches they have to make a safe place for us to learn so a school is meant to be a safe place for the children to learn protected from the outside world in that classroom uh, when i'm in front of the computer it's got to be a safe place and preferably without too many distractions now you can have all sorts of things going on but what you'll see if you've got people on video is that they're dis disrupted by a message that comes in over there, something moving on their screen over here, mm -hmm. things happening outside, noise happening, and so on. So our job uh, as leaders, particularly in tech environments, is to make sure the place is safe for us to learn, because the change is hard, and we need that safe place to practice and see if we can do it. And the second thing is once we've, we've trained people, even if we've kept a safe place, 
the world is not a safe place. So I go outside and the pressure is on in real life. I've learned yeah. this wonderful new way of you know, thinking through my leadership and stopping and making sure that I plan everything. But then my boss screams at me and says, why haven't you done this yet? So I react. And again, what is happening is all inside the brain. It's the way we function normally. And I call it about eating less and eating more tea. So eat is E-A-T, emotions, action, think. Because typically, if something is happening, my emotions have already responded. They've been on alert. They're watching for, oh, a bird flew past. Was that safe? If it didn't feel safe, my adrenaline, my cortisol is already running through my body. Right. Then I've I've already acted. I've already moved. So if something yeah. frightens you, you'll step back. You'll smile. You may not even know you smile. You'll, you'll look sad. You'll look contemptuous. All of that has happened because the critter brain has has the control. It's unconscious. Right. Then, and only after that has happened, do we start thinking. Mm. Now, that, that poses a bit of a problem because if my boss shouts at me, I get defensive, I'm, I'm scared. Or I am... I, I've done something wrong. I get, again, I get defensive. I'm, I'm fearful. And that right. changes my behavior. Then yeah. I think about it. Yeah, I shouldn't be scared of this. I shouldn't be worried about that. Why Why am I worried? And then I can think, control my emotions, and act accordingly. So what we want to do is get ourselves to switch. The eating is going to happen. Our right. emotions are going to get triggered. Our actions are going to follow the emotions. We can't stop that because it happens in split seconds. Right. And very good. Work, um, previously on uh, thinking fast and slow. Yes. Yes. It has two two it's processes: the fast brain and the slow brain. But the slower brain is is the one that thinks. It's the it's the smart brain. Yes. Thinks that that that's an amazing book, by the way. I would recommend it. Right. Think fast and slow. slow. And and but beyond beyond that, now when I hear those things. I, there's so many authors that come up uh, that have talked something about this. For example, I'm a yep. big fan of Robert Fritz, Structural yep. Dynamics, huge mm -hmm. fan of him. Uh, uh, he's not so neuroscience -y. He's he, He's more about, again, but again, the structure we have, which is the brain structure, determines each yes. emotion <laughs> act, right? But but it is, yes. it is a beautiful framework to understand also how to change because there yeah. is volition which is your will to actually do mm -hmm. what? Understand that it's eat, that a first emotion, yes. then action, and that and the T is? Uh, think. E-A-T -E is emotion, action, and? Think. And think. Thinking. Okay, so it's emotion, action, and think. Exactly. And thinking. So it's at the third, it's at the, it's number three in that in that order, yes. right? And we, we yeah. think that thinking is first, but it's not. So um, yeah. aside from that, from my question, from my question, how can we use neuroscience to become better leaders is by understanding the structures of the brain and finding ways, which are the word hack, right, that we use mm -hmm. to uh, to apply it so that we can get we can kind of get around those kinds of things. That's right. That's, That's right. So understanding right. neuroscience is, is tremendous. It's it's part neuroscience, part psychology. The, the, the boundaries are, are really shifting at the moment. But we're learning more and more. But this is the way we, we have been created. So this is the way our brains work. Understanding that is one thing. Now, what do we do about that? Right. And at the moment, Elon Musk has not you know, invented or created the, uh, the neural implant, the neural, the neural link that is going to do this uh, and we're going to allow computers to decide for us at the moment we've got to decide that we need to do something about uh, it. you and brought up Neuralink I'm, now I'm gonna have to ask you about your opinion on that what do you think about Neuralink um, do you want a computer deciding what you do no of course I don't there you go then we, we okay. we've got a big enough problem with uh, smartphones at the moment uh, that that one of the great things about going out at the moment in Singapore, we are allowed to go back and, and, and eat in restaurants and cafes. And what is 
beautiful to see is that people are there. It's the only place where you can take your, your face mask off and talk to somebody, a friend. So it's beautiful at the moment because people are taking the masks off and talking to friends, which they haven't been doing for many years. Previously, they were in the same restaurant, but they weren't talking, they were texting. So if you have a computer doing that, then everything that's going on inside of uh, inside of your brain is, is going to be dictated by a computer. We're not good at self-discipline as it is as human beings. Um, if we allow a computer to take over and do it, who have we given authority to control our lives? And suddenly, you know, I'm not sure that Elon Musk is the person I want in charge of my brain every morning. <laughs> Tell you to buy some uh, some uh, Tesla stock. So back to the back to his, like buy Tesla stock right away. Neuralink. But buy, buy back to how can we use neuroscience to become better leaders? I think so. It's about understanding the brain and yeah. having uh, using that information to make it actionable in our lives. Very you know, uh, very like step by step what to do so that we can uh, take advantage. Talking about advantage mm -hmm. of that information. Yeah. To, to to go around these circuitries, these things, and 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 to use yeah. them to our advantage. Of course, now I'm understanding a lot better. Exactly. Than exactly. <laughs> I yeah, keep you understand. It, I'm like, ah, thing. I see, I see. There you go. But all right. So now it takes me to the next question. What Indeed. is a neuroscience brain hack? Okay, a hack is a workaround. I mean, hacking traditionally is chopping roughly which in a sense we are because the way our brain works, we're, we're forging new pathways for many things in, in doing things. But a hack is a workaround. It's a way of, but I don't, I use the word tricking your brain sometimes, tricking yourself because your normal thinking, as we mentioned, emotion, action, think, what we're trying to do is make sure the thinking is happening. And, and that's why we use hacks, because hacks are, are very simple workarounds. But when I use the word simple, I, it's not always easy to do. It can be quite hard for some people because they've, they're used to doing things in another way. But what we have is a, a simple workaround that you can do. And I think, you know, one of the a great example of, of um, a very simple hack that everybody can do is my advantage hack number two is the second most powerful hack that we we teach our clients and we teach it very very quickly very very early on and i can do this right now with everybody all you have to do is pause you pause you breathe you think and one of the powerful things this is a lot of people will call this being mindful a lot of people will meditate like this but it's just, you've been asked a question, pause. And the power of the pause is astounding. As soon as you stop yourself just a moment, instead of interrupting the person who's speaking, you appear to be listening. Hopefully you are listening because you're thinking about them. what are you listening for? You're not just letting the self-talk interrupt everything that's going on because otherwise somebody else is speaking and you'll get well yeah, yeah i want to make this point and you interrupt um on other occasions it could be somebody's trying to tell you how to do something oh i know that already yeah, i don't need that no 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 that's that, i don't need that information i already know but perhaps they've got a different way of doing it so just stop from that brief moment and allow that to happen, whether it's a, a, a simple pause that gives a little bit of silence. Plus the other thing about pausing is it allows the other person to process because we're seeing things, we're, we're trying to make sense. So you just stop for a moment right. and then continue, but it gives your brain your thinking brain up here the neocortex chance to catch up 
you can understand in that moment of breathing deeply, get some oxygen, reduce cortisol, reduce stress, and suddenly you're back in charge. The, the, the thinking, the smart brain is back in charge. And that's possibly the most important thing people can learn. Right, right. From the distinction, distinction you made of the critter brain and the, uh, the smart brain. And, and mm. from my understanding, what you're saying is that neuroscience has discovered that, that if you're not taking this pause or using these hacks, the critter brain, meaning emotion action, is kind of uh, first place all the time. Yes. That, so we're always reacting uh, to things. Yes. Okay. And, and there are many people who live their lives based on their critter brain. They're not thinking. They're not thinking like rational, decent, moral human beings. They're behaving as if they're animals. And we see it. We see it all the time. We see it in riots. We see it in looting. It's, it's give me more, give me more, take more, take. And, and that's what's happening. Right. And the power of pause. Just power stop pausing for a second. Yeah, the astounding power of the pause. Then you think, no, that's not a good idea. Stop. Just don't do it. Uh, right. That would be fantastic if people would do that. Right. And it's something so simple and turning that into a habit, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> turning that into a habit is, you know, could be, could be, and I'm sure it is powerful. And, and at, at some point in this interview, I'll ask you to give me some insight on what, what you've seen in regards to your clients and how this has worked for them. Uh, but before we get to that point, I think, uh, so number one, a neuroscience brain hack is that, it's kind of like chopping through that in a way and getting mm -hmm. straight point being very practical and again very easy things that you can do today uh yes. and actually i'm taking that from this conversation and i'm going to start applying it now excellent of course as as a coach sometimes i make questions and then there's mm -hmm. like a 30 to sometimes even a 60 second pause and when I'm not seeing the person, it's just silence. When I'm seeing the person, the person's thinking. So those are those questions that elicit. That's why coaching, I think, is also very powerful <laughs> because it engages the thinking brain or the smart mm -hmm. brain in a way. And you get the person to reflect because that's the part of our brain. The smart brain is the one that reflects on things that are happening to make decisions, right? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Okay. And well, we have a comment here. Ooh, let's see. Uh, it says, uh, Yihan Lin. Do you, oh, there you go. Hi, John. Thanks for the nuggets. Hi. Pause before responding. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Yihan Lin, for that. Uh, and going back to these questions, I, I don't know if you, is there anything else you want to say about uh, what is a neuroscience brain hack before we move on to the next question? I think that gives you a, a, a good idea that they want to be simple if possible right. uh, and very straightforward. And what what you tend to find is, well, what I do is I layer them. So once you've got the secret power of the pause, well, we can use that. And exactly as you mentioned with questions, uh, and I think you're, you're speaking with Bob in uh, a few days time, uh, leading with questions, the right. power of questions does exactly what you say. It just stops people in their tracks for the moment and go, oh, I've got to, got to think of the answer. Right. And they can use their brain and then this, there, there might be a better way of doing this. And that's what we want to be able to do. So, you know, asking great questions is in many ways a hack. It's an interrupt for the normal way of being. Yeah. And I also, it brings to mind so many thinkers and modern day authors, you know, Joe Dispenza, all the stuff he's talking about, about being present. It all has to do with this. Everybody frames it from a different perspective, some from a more spiritual perspective, others from a more scientific, neuroscientific perspective, but it's all really mm -hmm. just the same. It's as humans being aware that we're aware and understanding the circuitry. And like you said, the way we're built and how yes. as conscious beings, we can override that because we have the magic of free will, right? 
exactly and i think when you when you you know you look at some of the spiritual things the mindfulness the psychology a lot of people particularly you know the engineers the scientists are soft and fluffy i don't or business people they like you yeah, know it's too it's too softly softly yeah they see science and yeah. it was all backed by science originally it's the way we were created so that's the way our brain works we're learning about it because we know honestly we, we know almost nothing about this this vastly complex thing up here right right but yeah, it, it puts it into a scientific perspective that people can say ah oh, it's chemistry yep it's chemistry <laughs> yeah i should have listened to my teacher in sec uh, i don't know in high school or something <laughs> you know <laughs> i didn't know this was going to help me get through later <laughs> that was useful uh, yeah, uh, yeah, of learning course. square roots was useful, yeah, but we, you know, they didn't unfortunately give us a, a practical use for it. Right, and and there's a lot of marketing around it as well. There's, I mean, I think there's a lot of, uh, uh, I think, uh, manipulation of information. I don't want that sounds bad, but, but that's what marketing is: manipulating information and ideas to get outcomes. And I think the way things yeah. are framed. Uh, but really, they're all saying the same things. They're all singing the same tune on a different key. Okay, it's mm -hmm. the same song, just a different key, different, same kind of structure. Which is what we're saying yes. that it's it's all about, uh, you know, understanding that we that free will, that volition, can lead us to direct our lives. You know, we, self leadership, so many different topics. But mm -hmm. now, getting to the next question, if that's okay, uh, is. How would you define now? I want to know about virtual leadership game and how you define this because it's part of the of, of the title. So, how would you define this virtual leadership game? The virtual leadership game. Well, it's it's the it's the world we're in at the moment, where at the moment we've all been forced to work from home and run our businesses from home to lead our team from home, unless you're in essential services. But even then, if you if you're able to uh, work from home then people need to be doing that for, for health sake right so whilst we've, we've been pushed into this world the technology is around and and the timing of covid really couldn't have been much better to have come once we've got all of these platforms available the, bit, the ability to use video so easily everybody's got a smartphone in their pocket so everybody can join in it's practically right. free to do this because the, the infrastructure has already been in place for many years. Right. So a lot of these things are there, but we haven't been doing a lot of remote leadership. Right. And this is where it's where it's begun to change because the virtual world is very different. It looks right. very similar, but it is different. And this is a highly competitive world. Right now, there are so many people losing jobs, pe businesses going out because there's not enough trade going through. Uh, the, the travel business is, well, it's crippled. Let's, let's put it kindly. Airlines, uh, I, where I live, we have a lot of maintenance um, for airlines going on here. Very little of that right now because, well, the planes aren't flying, so they don't need maintenance in quite the same way. Now, how do you how do you win in this very competitive, fractured and broken world? And we do need to win. Everybody needs to win. Everybody wants to win, but there are going to be winners and losers. So how do you do that? And how as a leader, how do I inspire my team from a distance? Right. You know, how do I motivate them? What do I what do I need to do? How do I challenge them? right now how do i lift them up how do i encourage them and engage them and how do i direct them how do i elevate them how do i edify them and myself because well none of us were expecting this to go on this long hey it's tiring it's honestly it's getting boring because we're seeing the same thing how do we do this uh, and and we mentioned earlier and you said before we came on air about you know our kids are at home we're right. we're working with our kids now for me that's great because i've been doing this for many years i, I set up a home office uh, after sars in 2003 and i think you get used to it but 
I've been speaking with many of my clients, my coaching clients, and well, you know, their marriage is taking a toll on this because they when when they got together, they one of them was traveling a lot. They were particularly here in Singapore, that they, they travel a great deal because we're such a tiny place. Right. But they, at least they were going to the office every day and they saw other people, there were stories to tell about what the other part the partner hadn't seen. But now you're together 24-7 that's tough you know you love this person but whoa it gets a little bit tiring and you've got to be able to set the boundaries and i've been doing some research with people uh, and that's what you've been reading and, and watching has been what have people been finding what are their concerns what's happening to them and they've all mentioned this that they're they're struggling to motivate themselves to keep on keeping on for the resilience and then that's just me well i've also got to i'm a leader and everybody i believe is a leader but i've got to encourage my my colleagues because right. they're feeling down struggling. and i don't know you know at the moment you know i know you have a baby but that's all i know yeah we can hear the baby <laughs> but that's it's also interesting the insights that people have again one of my clients was saying he, he, he doesn't like having the video on, but he turns the video on when his daughter's behind and she's playing peekaboo. And they say, why did you put the video on? Well, because they want to see you. They want people, we're nosy. We want to see what your home's like. We want to see your kids. We want to see your dog. Um, because we're missing that social element. Right. And that whole world has changed. That yeah. social interaction. We've got too much with our immediate families. Right. Nothing like enough to go outside. And and when they do open, you know, what, what happens when they open the pubs in England? Everybody goes to the pub because they've missed going to the pub. And then, unfortunately, they go and spread the virus around because they haven't learned the etiquette of wearing masks and they haven't worked out that actually this is a health thing it's not a rights issue so right. they they only say well i i need to get out well I, honestly we completely understand your need to get out the longer we can all suck this up and this is global for the first time ever this is something that's global but if we all suck it up for long enough this virus is going nowhere so yeah, yeah. we do that we can open up the economy for the world again because we kind of liked that we were enjoying the benefits over in mexico you were enjoying the benefits of you know world trade free trade across borders right china was loving the free trade and you know but they sucked it up they shut everything down under very serious lockdown conditions and they're out they don't have the problem anymore uh, and everyone said well you know that's a, that's the leadership but yes when you don't have to go for a vote that's okay you can do that sort of thing right but right and, and so, sorry for the interruption that leads it's a great segue because you we're kind of leading into the next question i think you've you've, yeah. you've touched upon what you know answering this question how are leaders currently playing the virtual leadership game and i think you're already saying a little bit about that can you continue yeah. to elaborate how are they performing under these circumstances leaders well, right not so well not so well uh, let me, let me talk about the biggest one of the biggest issues about the virtual world and, and what it is is there is no empathy online or very little empathy normally my empathy the emotions that i'm getting if you know if i want a sense of you and your happiness or your understanding of what i'm saying at the moment i yes i've got a video and you can nod but what you'll notice is that there is a i, I appreciate we're going halfway around the world and back everywhere else but there is a delay in what we're doing right there is a very slight delay between the video and the voice yes. and your unconscious brain is looking for the signals the smile the nod <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Right and then then of course what's happening and at the moment we're very blessed we've got a very very good connection but you could go bruh and you could stuck in that moment or you're talking and nobody's hear you yeah that's stressful for the brain 
that must be and the critter brain must go crazy. It's like, oh my God, unsafe, unsafe, right? Unsafe situation. The brain is exactly doing that. So, and, and one of our biggest things is the, these things, these, these two things here, these little hands. We don't realize how much we rely on watching the hands, the gestures, and seeing that my hand does not have a weapon. See, if I were meeting you face to face in person in a normal situation, we would have met wherever we meet and I would have come towards you with an open open palm, ready to shake your hand and we would have shaken hands and we would have touched. Oh, that touch. Now, I don't have to love you to get a little oxytocin boost right. in my brain. Right. Cool. Say, oh, yeah, I like, of course we like. We do. That's how I build a connection, my trust, my liking of a person yeah it's down to mammals. a memory we're mammals Called oxytocin. <laughs> and that's that's not happening i'm not getting the oxytocin because the the i don't see the micro expressions now they flicker too much and and this is whatever 30 uh, frames per second yeah yeah, per second. yeah 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 it's it's slower than our brain but it's fast enough to to trick our brain see it's a hack it's no more than that um, and what, what's happening is our mirror neurons, and mirror neurons are, are how I process what you may be feeling right now. So I, I'd literally go into the whole thing of, hmm, how is he looking? And the, how would that make me feel? And that gives me an indication and in saying, okay, he's, he's paying attention, he's listening. Or, no, he's bored, he's gone off. Or he's upset. Whatever it is, I get that and I can adjust, but in the virtual world, I can't, there is no, the mirror neurons really aren't working at all well. Right. Plus there is a small detail of the size of your head right now. Your head is actually tiny. It's about so big. Right. Uh, but it's also uh, three feet away from me, two, two and a half, three feet away, a meter yeah. away. Listen, yeah. your well, head should be this big. It should be much, much bigger. To me. Right. Now, what we don't realize, because my conscious brain, well, uh, it's a video, but what we need is, uh, and, and TV has worked work this out. So when you watch a TV program, what they do is that they create the set, they dress the set. So they do things like put pictures behind you now, or a sofa, if you watch Friends. And what that enables me to do is I, I can now adjust my my brain can adjust as oh yeah they're, they're proper size for what they're doing right if all i see the head and the torso i'm missing everything that's happening down here right you know you can't see my hands anymore you can't you know tell really what what i'm doing with my arms right except maybe i'm assembling a weapon that i'm about to stab you with <laughs> but that's true. Is, it sounds crazy, but but that's the unconscious part of the brain, not the the smart brain. It that's is. critter brain, right? It is. It's the critter brain, and the critter brain is asking three questions all the time: Am I safe? Do I belong? And do I matter? That's all it's asking, and it asks these questions every minute of every single day. It's constantly going: Am I safe? Do I belong? Do I matter? And as soon as it gets it, am I safe? Ooh, not sure. Mm -hmm. Do I belong? Okay, are you safe now? No, no, I'm not sure. And what's instantly happened, even as I thought about that, and even as people listen to me say that, their adrenaline, their cortisol level just went up a bit. And that's where we are. We're, when we're online, our brains are in a constant, continuous state of low-level stress. This is not good for us. This is killing us. Yes, yes. And our cortisol levels are too high. Our adrenaline levels are too high. So at the end of the day, people are feeling very antsy, what we call very antsy. Um, and these things are causing us problems. Is is that so, why? So, so Sorry, because this is very interesting for me. I'm learning a lot. I, I apologize sure. for the interruption. I'm curious, is that why there are so many problems with, uh, with insomnia since the... Uh, since the whole thing started? Because I, I did read some research that insomnia is over the roof. I mean, not insomnia in itself, but it looks like insomnia, right? It tastes like mm -hmm. 
people are not being able to go to sleep even after they, they work for 12 hours. And is yes. that is that because basically the cortisol is high, the brain waves cortisol, are beta. The adrenaline are, is still high and it takes a long time. Now, what honestly, if anybody watching has, has got that, they need to get out and exercise because it's the only thing that you can do that will deliberately go and begin to control that. So just get out and exercise, push yourself a little too far, genuinely exhaust yourself because what's happened whilst your unconscious is doing this, is working, 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 burning energy, you are exhausted. You are completely tired out. And particularly the people that are doing you know, eight, 10, 12 hours of back to back video calls. Well, their, their brain is just fried. Right. You have to take breaks. You must stop, turn the video off, switch off, switch off all screens, not just, you know, go from big screen to little screen to middle screen to back screen, big screen. No, switch off. If you need to go and if you need to do something, go and read a book change the format completely but best thing you can do get out do some stretches exercise tie yourself out physically right right of course of course go for a walk, breathe air if you're not allowed out then do exercise in your room wherever you are push yourself to the limit because you know it's not it's a good opportunity to do so right um when you're at your desk stand at your desk wherever you possibly can. So if you can't get a standing desk, build it up so that you can do it. Put your camera at eye level so that you can look at the camera. Right. Uh, yeah. All of these things, these are, I've, these are I've tips those that we're sharing. Yeah. Yeah, because what, what I noted, well, the, the thing about as well, I want to share something in Zoom meetings, either I look at the camera or I look at you. And that's also a little troubling and stressful because I'm looking at a camera I'm not looking at your face and it's very stressful for me because I want to look at your face because if I look at your face, you'll see me looking down. <laughs> you see, so there's really no eye contact. It's me having eye contact with a cold camera and that I, I didn't realize before this meeting that really stresses me out because there's no human. It's a, it's a lens. It's terrible. So I'm not safe. And I don't belong because this lens is not of my species, right? So what's the third one? So I'm not safe because I'm stressed out. I don't belong because this is a camera. Well, at, that point, at that point, you don't really care whether you matter or not. Um, because th those two levels at the beginning, they just keep going in a loop. The do I matter may even get a, may not get a look in. But the do I matter is, is what I'm doing useful? Am I, am I fulfilling my purpose on this planet? Right. Um, you know, Am I worth it? And and the worthiness is is the thing that causes a lot of people a lot of problems, particularly young people at the moment, because right. you know, they don't know what they want to do, because they don't know their purpose. They haven't thought about it. Nobody's taught them this. Well, they have taught them, but they weren't listening, and they weren't listening because the talking head video on YouTube. I'm sorry, was too boring. So, what we need to be able to do, we're not trained actors. Right. But we're, we're leaders, we're in business. But if you were an actor, I, you could show your emotions very, right. very. You could use your face much more effectively. You would exaggerate. And yeah. and that's what we need to be able to do as, as leaders is learn how to exaggerate, learn that this this thing has has a, has a frame around it, but use the space um, in order to do it. But also what you get is, you know, and you can tell I've got a, a green screen background here. If I do that and it starts to flicker and peep, then your brain starts going into loops as to, oh, what's happened? That, that, it's, what, it's what's, just, what's going, yeah, I was like, what, what, what is that background not real? Is this, oh, this is the matrix. So, but wait, yeah. going back, I mean, <laughs> no, this is amazing. This is amazing because when I, when I, when you were going to talk about this, I didn't know that how, how other than terrible, because this is not the good news, but it's still yeah. amazing. Uh, it's still amazing to understand that this is really happening. But again, like we we're backtrack to the beginning of this conversation, yeah. we can use the information about the brain to go uh, have a workaround, right? Which is all yes. about this, this hacking. That's what we want to do. We want exactly. to work around the problem. This right. is not ideal technology. If, right. uh, 
if all of this had to be invented and created after COVID, maybe people would come up with something completely different. Totally. Uh, there's a lot of work going into three-dimensional virtual worlds. But you know, I did a lot of research on virtual worlds, and it flips the brain even more than this stuff does. And if you've never been in a virtual world, just go to the nearest theme park when they're reopened and go into them and, and know what happens to your guts, to your brain, everything. Because, well, it's, you know, it's madness. And your brain doesn't, doesn't like it because we were designed for the real world, not for this one. But we right. can do not, things about it. Not for the, not it, for can the be, it can be but, more effective. There is no way you and I would be meeting in person today right. if one of us had had to fly around the world. Just no way. So yeah. there are things that we can do and we should be able to reach out because it's just understand this is what is happening. Empathy has flatlined. We need to compensate for it. Exactly. And now that's where we can we can do something about it. I, I just wanted to, I wanted to get to this point quickly. Uh, it's kind of a broad question, but I'm going to focus it. It says, how can brain hacking help leaders become masters at this virtual leadership game that they're not playing very well at, you know, being very good at? Now, just can you, can you give me two tips that a leader who, who watches this now or later can start applying now uh, so that they can, you know, level up right now in this situation? Can I give you three tips? I need three. to give you go three. Ahead. Go ahead, three. Okay. Perfect. Three. Okay. And they're, they're tied in together. So it's, it's one thing. So empathy is flatlined. So we need to give it some CPL. Okay. And rem remember, the mirror neurons aren't working. So our body language, we're missing a lot of it. We can, we can make up if we train as actors, we can do some of it. But the nuances, the subtle signs that our unconscious is very, very good at doing, fantastic. Uh, plus there's video delay, but there is ambiguity. Mm -hmm. So if I ask you to do something, there is ambiguity because I can't tell whether you're serious or not. Are you serious about that last question? Did you really want three tips? Um, and I don't have enough direction. I'm not clear. I'm not crystal clear. Plus, and I think we mentioned it before, with the, the lack of purpose. Why? 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 Why am I doing this? Why am I working 12 hours a day? So this uncertainty, so we compensate and we can do it with CPR. CPR stands for clarity. It's what. What do you want me to do, boss, specifically? Can we stop messing about and going vague? Give me a PowerPoint deck for the pitch on Friday. <laughs> that really doesn't tell me what you want. Really, yeah. Give me five slides to sell this product uh, that they're going to sign on a contract for X million dollars Friday afternoon, three o'clock. That's much more specific. Right. Okay. So exactly what do you want? Yeah, you've got your company standards. Be precise. Have clarity. Mm -hmm. okay. Second thing, P is purpose. Why? Uh, if, you, if people haven't watched Simon Sinek's TED Talk on Start With Why, yeah, go pull this one. Go and watch that. You need it. You need to start with why. Why we are doing things. You want to know your own purpose, but the purpose for the organization. Yes, it's to make profit, it's sustainability. What's in it for me? What's... So remember, it's purpose for the company, purpose for your business, purpose for the other person. Right, exactly. And to be honest, with many leaders, purpose for you, because I don't think many, many leaders really know their own purpose. What were you on the planet for? And let me give you give everybody who doesn't know their own purpose at the moment a very quick another hack for you. And I'll tell you, it's not about you. So that saved you a couple of days work. It's not about you. It's always about other people. Exactly. You're here to do something for the people. Yes, serving. So, yes. Now, whether it's serving, whether it's delivering, whatever, whatever it is, it's for other people. So just remember that bit. The third thing, so we've had clarity, we've got purpose. R is for responsibility. Tell me who is responsible. Now, when you're giving it to a team, it's one individual, one person. 
is responsible for that team delivering. You only want to make sure and you name them. Be very clear about this. When do you want it? And again, don't don't be vague. Three o'clock on Friday. Right. It's not good enough. Three o'clock Singapore time, Friday, October, whatever the October is, 16th, 2020. Be precise. And you say, well, it's being very pedantic. Yeah, but you've lost all the nuances. You've lost all the subtleties of your normal conversation. Yeah. So yeah. The, the people aren't getting the emotion. They're not getting enough empathy. We have to compensate for it. And this won't harm you if you do this in, in real life, in person, in person meetings. It will help because most leaders have to think of this first, then they can ask, and then their team will, will know what they do. So CPR, clarity, purpose, responsibility. Beautiful, beautiful. I love it. So we have EAT. So let's get back to kind of a review. EAT is, yeah. sorry, it's emotion, uh, it's uh, action and thinking. So Correct. emotion, action, and thinking, and CPR is clarity, purpose, and responsibility, right? So clarity is about being specific, make clear how the purpose of the leader, the organization, and the client, and all the stakeholders are aligned, and responsibility, who is accountable. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So going into the next one, uh, what results have you witnessed with your clients applying EAT and CPR and other hacks? And the pause, the, the pause is probably the, the thing that shocks people the most. Uh, every client that does it, they are completely gobsmacked how powerful it is. They're, what what happens when you use the pause? They stop, they think for a moment, they breathe, which is very important. You know, you think you're breathing well, but no, we're not. We need to breathe in our, deep in our belly, get some oxygen. Your brain needs the oxygen. It's power, powering a lot through. So uh, when they pause, they get better results. Instead of being belligerent in a meeting and, and forcing their viewpoint, they stop a moment. Right. What right. that tells everybody else is, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to your point of view. Yeah. OK. And you nod. And, and all the yeah, time, like you, yeah. you just all you've done is put your smart brain in gear. Yeah, the, exactly. the critical brain is gone. So now the smart brain, smart brain, I want, I want to be thinking about this because then I can answer and say, well, yeah, I've considered that. No, you're wrong. But I can say it in a better way. So before I say, no, you're wrong, pause. That's a very uh, strong idea. How could you, and what you do is push it back and ask a question instead, instead of saying no. And when you ask that question, as Bob will tell you in a couple of days' time, that causes them to start thinking through the process and, and they, they negate it themselves or they convince you otherwise. So the pause is very powerful. It actually makes you look wise. It's mm. terrific. Suddenly, I, I worked with one guy and he paused forever. Okay. <laughs> okay. And what and happened? Was I, I was come on, come on, speak, 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 speak. But, and then when he spoke, oh, it was wisdom. It was dripping with wisdom because he'd really thought through the entire problem. So you better be listening at that point. Plus, of course, when you stop and pause for a moment instead of talking, people, what, well, what happened? Oh, pay attention. So just use it, use it in your presentations, use it in meetings, use it with your kids, uh, teach your kids to pause, just say, stop and think, stop and think, stop, think, breathe. Because then the oxygen can come in. If you, if you teach them to breathe deep into the belly and blow downwards through the mouth, they will reduce the cortisol. They will reduce their stress. When we reduce our stress, we think That's better. Powerful. Well, just in this conversation, I've been applying things that you just said. I'm right, and I feel better. So there you go. In what, uh, 30 minutes, got results. Yeah. So 
Why? Because it's the way our brain is built. It's the architecture. Yes of yes. uh, the brain and consciousness and how all the, but we're not going to get into those philosophical points, but still, this is very powerful. Uh, thank Beautiful. you so much. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I learned so much today. Um, and I am your client today and I got results. So there you go. Uh, now, exactly. what, last question, what is the most yeah. important piece of information? Anybody who watches this, who's watching now or watches later for the eternity mm -hmm. of existence, uh, uh, should they walk away with today? One piece of information oh, that's critical. One piece of information. The one critical piece, it's advantage hack number two, is pause. Okay, that's powerful. When you, what you do is you you allow yourself that moment. You allow your brain to catch up. You allow other people's brains to catch up. To think about what's being said, because this is always, leadership is about a relationship. It's about communication. And so when we're doing that, we need to stop a moment, think and use our smart brains, because that is what sets good leaders apart. Those that think things through and communicate clearly have stopped a moment. They've paused, they've planned, they've prepared. And what they then do is they then look as if they're seamless. They look natural. There is no such thing as natural leadership. It is all a learned behavior. And the best leaders in the world, I guarantee, you watch their interviews, you watch them live, they pause. Of course. Of they course. Think, and especially the nervous thing. Right. They use the thinking slow more than the thinking fast, right? And uh, well, right. this this has been amazing. Uh, please uh, visit Leadership at advantage.com so you can get in touch with this amazing man who's talking about these amazing uh, tips. Uh, so, so get in touch with him on the description of this video. I put your LinkedIn and your YouTube, right? Fantastic. So Good. thank you so much. You can share this freely, uh, John, uh, with your community as well. And well, uh, thank you so, for, so much for being here. It's been amazing. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for being up so late in uh, Mexico there. It's, uh, no it's been a pleasure working with you and talking with you today. You enjoy a very blessed and restful sleep. Oh, hopefully, hopefully, yes, and get these lights off so my brain can start, right, because these these lights sometimes, uh, I, I didn't know that, that how important light is uh, in regards to sleep cycles, <laughs> it's very important, but, but anyways, well, thank you very much for being here as well. Have a very productive day. Uh, and, uh, well, that's it, my friend. Hope to talk to you some other day. Let's, let's keep in touch and who knows, yes. maybe I'll visit you in Singapore. Never visited Singapore. I'm sure it's very beautiful there. It sure, is sure. very beautiful. All right. We look forward right. to it. Take All right, my friend. Thanks, Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you everybody uh, for being here today. We had John Kenworthy on Thursday. We have Bob TD with leading with questions. Thank you very much being here tonight for those who uh, caught the show. And as always, this was Leadership Link, first episode in English, episode five. See you next time.